Well, guys, is it too late to say I told you so? We told you before that elections had consequences, and now we're starting to see it already. The Democrats are not even in power yet in Washington, D.C. That comes in January, and already they're floating these ideas of bills out there that'll actually make your hair fall out. Let's see, this is bill number HR7115 that's coming through. This thing is being disguised as the 3D Firearms Prohibitions Act. Now what that thing is, we've told you before about how they title these acts to say things that they really don't mean in terms of what they really stand for. When you hear the term 3D Firearms Pro Prohibition Act, you think of this is an act towards 3D printing of guns, right? It has nothing to do with 3D printing of guns, nothing. This is simply for, if you really want to get down to it, it's the 80% the lowers that you see on AR-15s and the polymer frames that you see. I think Polymer 80 is one of the really good companies out there making some really cool 80% uh, frames for semi-automatic handguns, kind of a Glock clone type thing, if you will, a semi-automatic pistol. But this thing is aimed directly at that. It's aimed to keep you and I, at least on the surface, it's aimed to keep you and I from being able to manufacture our own guns, the quote ghost gun that we've been hearing so much about, from an 80% lower or 80% frame. What it's really aimed at in the long run is semi-automatic, period. Semi-automatic handguns and semi-automatic rifles. The summary of the bill reads, to prohibit the sale, acquisition, distribution, and commerce, or import into the United States of certain firearm receiver castings or blanks, assault weapon parts kits, and machine gun parts kits, and the marketing or advertising of any such castings or blanks and kits on any medium of electronic communications to require homemade firearms to have serial numbers and for other purposes. Now, anytime Congress or anyone in Washington is going to propose including the phrase and for other purposes, I'm already scared because that is a catch-all and that is a very, very wide net that they can cast however they see fit. Here again, we have legislators that know nothing about firearms who are trying to pass legislation that's gonna, that's gonna work against you and I. That's got nothing to do with what these guys are even talking about. So here we go again, the blind leading the educated. Now I'm gonna put some of the meat of this on screen so you actually can see it, but I'm not, go, not gonna go through every part of the bill right now. What it's focusing on, I want you guys to be aware of, it's focusing on you being able to create a semi-automatic firearm or pistol Remember that, it's not just an AR-15, the old mean assault weapons. They're classifying pistols as, as assault weapons also. But why parts kits? You know what that's gonna do? You're not gonna be able to install your own trigger kit from now on. That includes any kind of trigger kit. We're not just talking about the echo triggers or the binary triggers that we already know they're going after. We're talking about any aftermarket kit because that is going to be an assault weapons part kit by their definition. So it's going to include all of those. That will be springs. Uh, if you get a broken spring of some sort, you're not gonna be able to fix that on your own anymore. That's gonna drive your cost up for anything else that you might wanna do at that point. That includes anything, guys. Anything to finish, to complete the assembly of an AR-15 or a pistol. Remember, that is a big overreaching thing. That could be recoil springs for your handgun. That could be a slide, a custom slide of some sort. That could be a magwell for a 1911. A 100-year-old gun could actually be considered that, a, a semi-automatic weapon by their definition. Now, let me explain how this is going to take place. First of all, you're not going to be able to purchase these 80% lowers anymore. Those guys are going out of business. They're going to allow you to pay an FFL dealer to create a serial number for you. So you're going to have to pay for an NICS background check whenever you make one of those. And you're going to have to pay for them to get you a serial number so that you can put on and have stamped onto that firearm. Those are additional costs that you're going to have to pay for because having the possess or possessing these things is that's going to be illegal. And here's where it gets really good. Ban on possession or transfer of firearm without serial number. It shall be unlawful for any person in or affecting interstate or foreign commerce to possess or transfer a firearm made after 1968 by a person who is not a licensed manufacturer unless, and then it goes on to talk about all the things that you have to have done, uh, serial number identifying mark on the firearm uh, within 10 days of the issuance of the serial number identifying mark, it goes on to talk about it, but it does not discuss and does not state that these will be uh, grandfathered in. So your grandfathering is not gonna happen, guys. Uh, for those of you thinking that, well, I got them ahead of time and it's gonna be okay. No, you're gonna, if you wanna continue to hold on to those, you're actually gonna probably have, my, my guess is, a grace period to go in and get serialized, pay for your serialization of those 80% lowers and those polymer 80 
pistol lowers that you make without serial numbers ahead of time or before you actually become legal. So you're gonna have to do that once this law passes, if it in fact does pass. Now you might be thinking the term assault weapons parts kit seems pretty innocent, right? Let me tell you what their definition of that is. It means any part or combination of parts designed and intended to enable a consumer who possesses all such necessary parts to assemble a semi-automatic assault weapon. So that's any part needed to include uh, or are you that you need to complete your full build of an AR-15 or a pistol? That's not saying all the parts together. That's saying every part is identified as a potential part for completing the assault weapon that they're talking about. Again, none of these aftermarket parts are going to be able to be sold to you guys. This is not going to happen. Now, this is where it gets really fishy. This is where I'm telling you, you never leave it up to legislators to define things that we know better about. Under definitions, the term semi-automatic assault weapon means a, a semi-automatic rifle or semi-automatic shotgun that has the capacity to accept a detachable ammunition feeding device, a magazine, or b, a semi-automatic pistol that has the capacity to accept a detachable ammunition feeding device, I'm sorry guys, it's cold out here, or any one of the features described in subsection b. Here we go with subsection b. Special features of a semi-automatic pistol. Now, it has to only include one of these. As long as it has a detachable magazine, which is every semi-automatic pistol that I'm aware of, it only has to include one of these devices or one of these other features. An ammunition magazine that attaches to the pistol outside of the pistol grip, you know what that means. That's simply <laughs> an extension, a finger extension. That might be a Glock 26 or a Glock 27 and you simply have the extension on there to allow your pinky finger to rest on the grip of the gun. That's extending past the magazine. That's, that's going to make your gun a semi-automatic, or excuse me, a, uh, an assault weapon by their definition. A threaded barrel capable of accepting a barrel extender, flash suppressor, forward hand grip, or silencer. Personally, I don't put forward hand grips on my threaded barrels on my semi-automatic guns, but that's what they're talking about. A shroud that is attached to or partially or completely encircles the barrel that permits the shooter to hold the firearm with the non-trigger hand without being burned. That sounds like a slide to me. Oh, I know. Am I being ridiculous here? Look, come on. They're putting this stuff in bills for a reason. Even though they say stupid things, they know what they're doing. They know that that's the stupidest thing in the world talking about a shroud. And this, they're referring to pistols, to handguns. That will be, that will be any handgun out there that has a slide on it. And then it goes on to say a second hand grip. Uh, it talks about the weight. Then it says a semi-automatic version of an automatic firearm. Okay, guys, last one, construction. Nothing in this act shall be construed as limiting the ability of a state to enact more restrictive gun-related laws or bans on firearm receiver castings, firearm receiver blanks, assault weapon part kits, or machine gun parts kits. What? Guys, this is an overreaching infringement no matter how you look at it. This is also a way for them to start getting you to accept the fact that what they call assault weapons are now going to include shotguns, rifles, and pistols that we use on everyday purposes. In fact, one that I have on my side right now. That's going to include a whole lot of things. There's gonna be lots of things that are gonna be included in this. Again, this is a softening up of a way for you and I to somehow or another be dumbed down to a point where we learn to accept that, oh, they're just being stupid again. They're just talking about, they're not talking about uh, handguns or shotguns or uh, AR-15s. They're talking about full auto when they say assault weapons. No, they slowly but surely start to creep these different things in that apply to you and I in their little definitions that they create on their own. That's the danger and us leaving it up to them to keep using their own terms however they want to because they misuse them and now they're going to be all these people are going to be voted into congress now and now you and i are going to start becoming felons because we let them write stuff like this you need to contact congress you need to let them know this is bull let them know it's wrong let them know it's an infringement on our second amendment rights you need to get on it right away do not give these people time we're trying to be ahead of the game right now they're already telling us and showing us what they're going to do come 2019 two months before they even get in office so that means gives us time that we need to start beating them up now, let them figuratively, obviously, and let them know that we aren't going to let these things stand. And the things that they're proposing, we're not going to let them fly. Contact your Congress people now, folks. Do not wait.